guess, you know, to how those guys must have felt. To get to the point that you can understand, okay, this is the routine, I jump out of a moving plane, and I fall to the earth, and hopefully a chute opens, and then the easy part is to grab my weapon and go kill people. It's a totally different world. They flew pretty much into, into mayhem. They lost at least a thousand, a thousand paratroopers before they hit the ground. Planes shot down or being shot just in their parachutes. They were dropping guys at 500 feet. I mean, it, the ground is very close at 500 feet. The pilots didn't really know what to expect or, or weren't trained for that amount of anti-aircraft fire and flew too low, flew too fast. So when they flew too high and they got scattered all, all uh, to hell and gone, basically. Camera. The special effects department constructed what we call a gimbal. It's a very large hydraulic driven apparatus that sits underneath the plane and um, they can control every possible axis of movement in varying degrees of intensity. And that thing is really rocking and rolling as if you were in a real plane bouncing about. A bunch of us went on board and we said show us how it works and he very gently did the controls. and. Fool that I am, I said to him jokingly, "Come on, come on, show me what you got." It was unbelievable. It was an e-ticket ride. My episode, episode two, starts with the uh, aircraft, the C-47s, full of paratroopers. It starts with the guys jumping out uh, out of the aircraft. We tended decided that we would predominantly keep with Winters, who's our who's one of our main characters in the episode. Eight seconds. It's all it took. Plane to the ground. I'm going to do it in about four. Very dangerous, highly skilled stunt for that kind of take. What we thought we would do would be to follow him down to the ground in one go. So from the time he jumps out of the aircraft to the time he hits the ground is one shot. And we're doing that by hanging the actor against blue, uh, with a lot of air being blown on him on a, on a hip rig, so we can swivel and pivot him in lots of directions. Then we have a camera crane, which is moving, represents really the, a floating camera. When we make him fall, it's, he's not falling at all. The aircraft is moving away, so it looks like he's falling. So that's put on in, in a, a process, uh, an optical process afterwards. So if you shoot someone against a blue screen, the computer can remove the blue and put whatever background you want in. In this case, it would be aircraft and sky and other paratroopers. So we have our actor falling. We have a camera crane that moves into him, goes up to his face, looks down to the ground as he looks to the ground, looks back up to him again, all in one shot. Let's go! The look and feel of Band of Brothers was enhanced during post-production at Cinesite London using a revolutionary all-digital film finishing process. The technologies that we pioneered to get HBO on board were really about um, electronic color timing. It was about having the ability to electronically control all of the aspects of hue and color and be able to match them shot for shot. Before we started shooting, there was, a, there was a set of instructions from Tom and Stephen about what they wanted and what they didn't want and what the look of things had to be. It's desaturated, there's, there's not much colour in it. It's, it's as though you were actually back in the 1940s with a 1940s camera actually shooting stuff for real. And when we do post-production, when we do digital effects, we keep a consistent theme throughout the whole, the whole show, basically. Cinesite also provided many of the 700 visual effect shots in the miniseries that recreate Easy Company's experiences. We're dropping deep into occupied Holland. Our job is going to be to liberate Eindhoven. What we're doing here is recreating uh, Operation Market Garden, which is the drop in Holland of, of thousands and thousands of troops. Uh, this is the, the first shot for the uh, parachute sequence. We're not looking at the high-resolution parachute and soldiers. We're looking at uh, very low-res models so we can very quickly um, and easily lay out the look of the shot and the speeds and the animation and the timing. And this is an individual soldier with parachute and there's animation on the actual soldier as he comes down just to uh, give life to it. 
then from this we can render high resolution models. In this case we're taking Mike's CG and I'll then layer those CG elements over the live action background, which in this case is this shot here. And what we needed to do here is separate somehow the, the background from the foreground. So we create uh, a mat which would look something like this. And basically what happens here is anything in the black area will allow the, the parachutes to be visible. But as soon as they hit this white area here, they'll disappear from view. And it'll give the impression of them falling behind the foreground elements. So all those very tiny details need to be achieved so that you believe that it really is happening. Recreating Easy Company's battles sometimes required up to 14,000 rounds of ammunition a day, utilizing about 700 authentic World War II weapons and 400 rubber prop guns. Over here on the right, we have the M1 Garand rifles, and uh, on the opposite side, we have the Germans, and they're with the K98 rifles. This is a paratrooper version of the M1 carbine, and that means it's got a folding stock which again makes it, it easier to jump with. This is one of our MG42s. That's a 88 flak round high explosive. This is what will have been fired by the planes when they went in on D-Day. This is one of the rubber uh, pistols that we'll be using on the film. Wherever possible, we'll use a rubber gun. When it's in its holster, it should look like the real thing. This is one of our rubber 5 O's that we've just finished um, painting up. As you can see, we've just highlighted the rubber here to make it look a little bit like metal. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Wow. I thought for sure that thing was made out of total, total metal. Now this is one of the tanks from a Private Ryan. This is a Tiger tank, and we actually uh, built this on the chassis of a T-34. We've actually put wheel spats and hubcaps and things on to bring it back to looking more authentic like a Tiger tank. All this uh, uh, sheeting is covered in this Zemmerite finish, which the Germans use like a paste which actually stopped uh, magnetic mines and that being put on the side. The turret works and we will be having the gun firing with the special effects with the full uh, ricochet. These are some uh, British Army armoured personnel carriers which have the smaller wheels which work very good for the uh, Panzer Kampfwagen 3. The big problem with these is that of course we have to extend the length with one more wheel, as you can see, we've got six wheels there and only five here. The engine on these comes right at the front, and obviously it's in the wrong position. We will actually be cutting it off right through there and moving the engine further back. We are building altogether six tanks and renting in uh, four. The scene we've just finished shooting is uh, the major assault on the American line in the forest in the Ardennes. The battle was planned by Captain Dale Dye, and we only shot it once. This will be a close-in, hole-to-hole fight between Easy in these holes here and that infantry. It's a difficult scene because we have five cameras running on it and uh, because we've got explosions to make sure everyone, not only the stuntmen, the extras, the drivers of the vehicles know exactly where they are, when they're going to go off, where the vehicle should be when it goes off. This is a big shot. I think it's probably one of the biggest in the film so far. By the time the production completed shooting its third episode, the special effects department had already used more pyrotechnics than saving Private Ryan. What we've developed here is an air hit. There's a system in here that activates this, this valve here that allows the blood and the 